limitations to the model so the, the models come out the way that uh, the business users need. And then once the model and the data have been populated, uh, we deploy the model to an analytics environment. And uh, that's this next step where we'll actually publish, uh, publish the model out to the analytics server, uh, which is wired up to the uh, Vertica database. And, that, and that's the, the general process. Now all the other elements of this are still important. So let's say um, I want to monitor all the, you know, all those different data sets that are spinning up. So each time a, you know, a data set is um, deployed to the uh, Vertica environment, I want to keep track of those and I might want to age them off, right? I may only want to, you know, maybe the user specifies how long they want them to live for and then we age them off afterwards. So the orchestration of all these moving parts can be done within Pentaho in the same environment. So you can define rules and, and processes uh, for the entire uh, uh, environment. And that's why we put out a template. So you don't have to write all this yourself. You can just reuse a lot of the uh, templates we uh, have created already. And so they're, they're actually, if we, if we look in, at this example and look at the different transformations, the different data processes that are involved, there's actually a lot of different data processes that take place that orchestrate and that end up driving that end user application. So if I go back and I look at everything from this uh, high level view um, to the, uh, the form itself, every single one of these uh, data uh, pieces are being sourced from that integration environment. So that uh, really lets you get, uh, build out an experience without writing any code. You didn't even really have to write SQL, right, to, to build this out. And, and that's the power of Pintao. Right now we're investing more on this front end. Like right now this front end is really built by web developers, but we realize the value in, in making this easier, making the form building easier and everything. So making this a drag and drop experience. And we, we have technologies like that for dashboarding, so why not apply it uh, to the streamlined data refinery for building out uh, forms and such. So that's an area that we're, we're continuing to improve the, the use case, right, by building tools that uh, make life easier for uh, the folks that are building this for their uh, companies and for their customers. And that's really the, the Biome example in, in a nutshell. Uh, there's, we, we also have a few other examples in other industries, and we have a lot of customer examples, and that's what I'd like to um, give a customer example now. Um, let me go back, Let's, hopefully this works good. So one example we like to talk about uh, is Ruckus Wireless. They're a wireless company and they collect uh, data from Wi-Fi access points. And they have millions of these uh, access points and, and users around the world. So they collect this data in a data lake and then they provide that data uh, for analysis. And again, the, the raw data is sensitive because it, has, it may have personal information about the web, what they're browsing on the web, may have session details that they don't want to make available. So they build out a streamlined data refinery to allow their analysts and, and customers to access that data in, in a way that's governed. And uh, one, one unique thing about uh, Pentaho is uh, our customers are also community members. So in this case, Ruckus actually built a Kafka integration with Pentaho and contributed that back to open source and is part of our open source marketplace right within that data integration environment. So a lot of times our community and our customers build out those integration points and that's how we're able to maintain and build out all those different uh, pieces that connect to a large number of different data sources is through not just a small engineering team that we have but through the uh, open source ecosystem. And, and really, uh, you know, the innovation that occurs in our environment and Hadoop and NoSQL environments more so lately has, you know, well, fundamentally has come from the open source um, Apache Foundation and uh, commercial open source companies that are investing not only in their own proprietary capabilities but in contributing back. You also have a lot of companies in the Bay Area like uh, uh, Twitter and, and uh, Yahoo and Google who, who contribute back their ideas and their code that allow these big data technologies to even be possible. So. Uh, it's, it's great that we can participate in that ecosystem and that we have customers that are solving their business problems but also contributing back. Uh, so finally, to, to wrap things up, I think I'm a little early, but that's okay. Um, 
the Streamline Data Refinery allows for uh, customers to access their big data environments. They, uh, they can now all of a sudden go from a small number of coders working with, uh, you know, working with Hadoop to opening up to their business and opening up to their customers, potentially. Uh, the Streamline Data Refinery allows for that blended uh, data. So data doesn't just have to come from Hadoop. It can come from web services real time. It can come from uh, any a variety of data sources through tools like Pictile Data Integration. And finally, it's all about that simple business user experience. The business user experience, they would have no idea that behind the scenes there's all these moving parts and, and uh, the big data environments behind the scenes. They don't need to know, right? When we're, when we're shopping Amazon or searching Google, do we really need to understand MapReduce or, or the process that go on behind the scenes? We don't, we, we want a simple experience. And so uh, those three er things really make up what a streamlined data refinery is about. Uh, so that, that's my uh, intro to Streamline Data Refinery, and uh, let's open it up. Open, open it up, up to questions. questions. And Janelle here has a microphone, so she'll come to you. So give, give her a second to get to you. So in um, one of the diagrams that you had, uh, one component of field models, can you elaborate what kind of models you to Absolutely. Uh, in, in this particular instance, we're talking about uh, OLAP models, so relational OLAP models. In fact, uh, the engine that we use, uh, Julian Hyde, the creator of the engine, uh, so he's the one, he caused, the, uh, caused that. Um, so they're relational OLAP models that map a SQL like star schema to a logical model for a business user. So that's the model that's being generated. But if you have, you know, let's say you have a Tableau model you want to generate. Uh, because it's uh, open source components, you can build um, integration with other BI tools. We just because we're one company, right? And we've integrated our different tools throughout throughout the process. Next, any other questions? One quick shot. <laughs> I'm gonna start asking you guys questions next. <laughs> Uh, do you have machine learning inside the compiler? Yes, a absolutely. So we uh, support the Weka project. I don't. Ha who has heard of Weka? Okay, yeah, a lot of folks have heard of Weka. It's one of the most popular um, open source data mining environments, and it supports a large number of algorithms. And more recently, Pentaho has been investing in uh, moving that into the big data environment, so supporting MapReduce and and Spark. So uh, that's absolutely part of our offering and. And it's incorporated right within the product. So you can, after you've built your models in Weka, you can deploy scoring or uh, uh, time series forecasting or what, whatever the capability happens to be right within those data flows that I showed. Uh, you didn't show Microsoft's uh, SQL Server. Is that something you deliberately exclude? <laughs> if I listed every SQL environment up here, I'd be up here for a long time. There are a number of them. We are fully compatible with Microsoft SQL, um, and it's a good product. And what about data swamp? Data, a data swamp? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, when things are out of control. So you when the lake oh. becomes yeah, ungoverned. Yeah, becomes and, uh, <laughs> data swamp. I mean, yeah, all yeah. kinds of phrases are being uh, manufactured to show the chaos. Absolutely, and I, I think that's why step two is very important, that metadata understanding of what's in your data lake, because if you don't, if you don't uh, deploy governance and, and understanding of your data, it's just a file system, right? Why, you could have, you know, I, actually I'm afraid to look at my file system right on my laptop even, of all the stuff nice. I've collected over the years, it's a swamp, right? Let alone if you have a big data lake that can store petabytes of uh, data, I'm sure that happens. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, data comes in all kinds of forms, but this this uh, refinery use case is definitely for data that does you know doesn't scale up, right? So for uh, the you know the IoT example, the stock market example, those data sets are just too big to fit in, into a single machine. So those are and and that's a key element of the streamlined data refinery. If you're just working with small data, there's no need to put together all this architecture uh, to address the data. So 
you know, I don't really necessarily, you know, the data sizes are always a moving target, right? Because the technology is always getting better. So, 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 talking about petabytes here? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, our customers are, you have some of the largest data sets in, in the world. Like I mentioned, every single um, trade on the stock market every single day goes in, you know, goes into, not Pentala technology. In that, in that case, that's a, uh, you know, goes into the cloud and Amazon. They collect all that data and they're using technologies like Redshift and, and uh, Hadoop within uh, AWS. But they use Pentaho tools to orchestrate and, and to define the data processes within those uh, data environments. I, I have a couple questions then. If, oh, oh can, you, can you talk a little bit of, more about how this is used in a cloud environment like AWS? Yeah, absolutely. So um, in, in that example, uh, S3 is used to store the raw you know, stock data. So the data comes in, I think they, I believe they store it in Avro format. And then they, uh, uh, they use EMR in that, in that case to uh, process the data. EMR is Amazon's uh, cloud offering, but there's no reason why we've seen customers deploy Hortonworks and Cloudera and AWS. And there are other cloud offerings beyond AWS as well that we've seen. And Pentalo supports a number of those cloud offerings. We don't support them all because there's, there's, uh, you can't support everything. Uh, but we have a pretty flexible architecture that allows you to deploy it, you know, as a AWS instance into those Hadoop environments that are already running in the cloud. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to deploy Pentaho and those big data environments within the cloud. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. How, how many people are actually working on big data problems today? Are folks working on big data problems yet? Okay, that's great. And have you, have, does this resonate? Much. I mean, does a streamlined data find that simple process, uh, you know, a repeatable process resonate? Fantastic. Is this something that, that end users really can deploy fairly easily, or do they require sort of consulting uh, support for that? Yeah, so I would definitely, this is not, a, the end user would you'd be the final user of the system. But at this stage with Pentaho and Hadoop Technologies, it's not a drag and drop kind of thing. With cloud uh, offerings, it's becoming more uh, possible to move in that direction, I would say. But really, I mean, uh, to, be an ex you know, to be able to deploy Hadoop, which is a core requirement you know, in, in these kind of use cases, you have to be pretty technical. So uh, it's, it's an IT level person that, that's working with Pentaho. You know, one, one value that Pentaho brings is right now, a lot of the Hadoop work happens in code, right? Spark is great, everybody loves Spark, but to, to love Spark, you, you're you pretty much a coder, right? And, and not everybody's a coder. Uh, so you so we build tools that allow um, IT and above to work with it. Now, uh, um, I was talking to a customer this morning who said that they deployed a Pentaho data integration to their business customers and they were running into some issues uh, but it just wasn't built for business users, right? So it's an IT level technique. You need to understand the Hadoop environment and, and such. You just don't need to code it. You can just configure it. Can you talk about some of uh, other products? Or I know it's sure, sure. I, I uh, dabbled with our analytics up there with a quick visualization, but we offer uh, a, a highly embeddable anal analytics uh, front end. So everything from the individual visualizations into rich dashboards all the way to the slice and dice experience. We have customers highly modifying and customizing those for their business needs. So one customer example is Marketo. Are folks familiar with Marketo? Mm -hmm. So they have an advanced analytics offering uh, upsell that is Pentaho, but when you go into Marketo, you don't see Pentaho's brand. You just see uh, Marketo, it's all skin and, and feels like Marketo, but in all the processing and everything behind the scenes, drives that e experience uh, and it's just an integrated seamless experience for Marketo but it's Pentaho technology inside. Uh, is it front end like JavaScript or? Yeah, so uh, most of our front end APIs are, are JavaScript oriented so if you want to embed into a web app you can just use our JavaScript. We also have uh, Java SDKs for the more uh, back end functionality. For instance, if you want to add custom user defined functions into our analytics or if you want to define a custom step Inside of the transformation, you would write a Java application, you know, Java component. We're over here. I love the idea of the refinery, and that analogy is great. You make a request for the refinery. How do you scale performance? You know, you start out with a request on a little bit of data, you learn something you want to learn on 
much larger data set. Yep. So what type of data activity do you there, do? There's different elements of a performance uh, graph, I guess. There's you know a single user working with petabytes of data, um, and then there's uh, thousands of users working with small data, and then there are thousands of users working with petabytes of data. So that I sort of see those two dimensions. There's lots of users and lots of data, and they sort of all have to work together. So I mean, what's great about uh, Hadoop uh, is it's a scale out architecture. You know, our BI architecture has been scale out for a long time because an individual user coming into a system, you can uh, pretty much set up uh, you know, a, a pretty uh, share nothing architecture where each user sort of has their own processing and, and, and such. But from the, uh, the, the, the key to scaling is, is that data more so than the number of users, I would say. But for a typical user, what expectations could you set from the time they make the request to the time the email comes back and says it's done? Minutes, <laughs> hours? It really depends on the use case. Uh, so that's, it's always, it's tough for like a integration company to, or an analytics company to put metrics behind it because it's so dependent on, well, let's say you want to pull weather data live. You know, you're dependent on the time that it's going to take to talk to the weather service. So it really depends on the use case and the underlying technology. Pintado it, it deploys into those environments. So. Spark, for instance, being in memory is faster than MapReduce, which is uh, going to disk a lot. So it really depends on the architecture that you deploy below Pintao, more so than the Pintao technology itself. Okay. And, th and those companies love talking speeds and feeds and, and uh, how fast one database is over another and such. Yes. First, nice. join me in thanking Will. <laughs> All right. So we had a drawing for the T forty nine er tickets. Um, is there an Eric Nielsen? Okay. Perfect. Oh, so. Yeah. And we'll e I'll email them to you. Okay. Cool. Great. Thank, thank you nice. all. And feel free to kind of chat with Will afterwards. And we look forward to seeing you in our events in a few weeks. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.